Hi friends, Mr. Laramie here. I am so excited to be back. I have missed you guys so, so much, my friends. So, what have we been learning? Have you been learning a lot? You better have been learning a lot because I am so excited and there's so much more we're going to learn. So you know what, first, get your pens, your paper, get ready to learn. But before we learn, you know, there's always one important thing we have to do before we start anything. And what is that? Can anybody tell me what that is? Okay. I'll tell you what it is. We have to pray. So, in order to pray first, you put your hands together, you close your eyes. I hope nobody's opening their eyes. Yeah. And then, so we just say a short word of prayer first before we start. So we're going to thank God for one church. We're going to thank God for life. We're going to thank God for bringing us here today. To so thank him for another wonderful lesson because today is going to be exciting. And we ask that God opens our minds so we learn, we understand, and we have so much fun. And when we're done here, that we have enough to go into the week and share what we've learned with all our friends. Because remember guys, we're not just keeping everything we've learned to ourselves, but to all our friends. So, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. I am so excited. I don't know if you guys, if you guys are as excited as I am. You should be. So, before we start, before I tell you the topic, we're going to dash in for praise and worship. Yeah, we're going to dance. I hope you guys are ready to dance because I am ready. I'm pumped and I'm excited to dance. So, I'll be back right after this. friends how are you doing today i hope you are having a great time if you are happy to be here come on make some noise i cannot hear you yeah all right raise up your hand and say jesus thank you for loving me i didn't hear you say jesus thank you for loving me yeah so this song says jesus you love me too much tell your neighbor say Jesus loves me so much. Yeah. Let's do it now. Are you ready? One, two, three, go. Come on. Come on. Woo. Come on. Your love is kind. Your love is patient. I guess you know it right. Sing it. With so much peace and joy. With so much. Let's take it again. I didn't hear you very well. Sing. Your love is kind. Your love is. With a smile on your face. Come on, say. I love you. Come on. You feel my heart. With so much peace, with so much peace. And now put your hands on your chest and say, you're amazing. Let's go. You make my life, you make my life feel brand new. One more time, say, you're amazing. Sing it, say. You make my life. Are you ready? Say, your love is, come on, 
Your love is patient. Sing it. Your love is patient. You, you, you feel my heart. You feel my heart. With so much peace and joy. With so much peace and joy. Say you're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You make my life. One more time. You're amazing, you're amazing. You make my life. You make my life feel Are you ready? Come on. Say, Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh.
I'm back. Whew. That was exciting. Did you dance? I danced so much, I have to clean my face. It was exciting. I hope you enjoyed that. So, right into it. Today's topic is be strong and courageous. Now, the strength I'm talking about today is not physical strength, but it's the real type of strength. And we're going to use two specific characters in the Bible. One of them, I'm sure we all know. The second person, most of you might not know him more. Just listen and pay attention. Remember, your notepads, your biro or pencil, and let's begin learning. So the first character is David. Yes, everybody knows David. In fact, most of us have a David in our lives. We have friends named David, but we're talking about the original David, the very first David that we really learn about. Now, this time, we're not talking about David in the future. We're talking about David from when he was young. And we're going to be looking at the book of First Samuel. Now, remember, First Samuel is in the Old Testament. So that's the beginning of your Bible, the book of First Samuel, because there are two books of Samuel. Well, this is First Samuel chapter 17. That's 17, 1 and 7. Chapter 17, verse 1 to 52. Yes, 52 verses, so much more. Why don't we read every single verse so we can, so we don't read everything. You can read them on your own. You should read them on your own. So I'm going to brush through a few verses and pinpoint a number of things. So first, who was David? We learned from this story that David was, before the story, remember that the prophet Samuel, who the book of Samuel was named after, and God had asked him to anoint someone as the next king. Yes. There was already a king, King Saul, but God wanted someone else because King Saul had been naughty. He had done something bad. So David was anointed. Out of all of his father's children, David's father's name was Jesse. Yes. And he had many children, strong men, strong boys. But God said, nope, I'm not looking at physical strength because, you know, God is not about the outward appearance. It's about what's inside. So God had told Samuel to go and anoint David, this young boy. David was the youngest. In fact, he was the one that everyone asked to, oh, do my homework. Oh, wash the dishes. Oh, do this, do that. Because David was very young. So David was the youngest. He was really young. And he was the one that had to take care of his father's sheep. So he was a shepherd. So he looks after the flock. He does all the menial, small work. When his older brothers do the big, strong work for men. So on this particular day, Jesse, David's father, told him, David, go out to the field and meet your brothers. So we're going to read a bit from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17. So, and what we read first in verse 1, Now the Philistines gathered their forces of, for war and assembled in Judah. So there was war, guys. It means there was a big fight. Who were the Philistines fighting? Let's find out. Saul and the Israelites assembled and camped in the valley of Elah. Hmm. So the Philistines are fighting Saul. And Saul? Yes. Now Saul, remember, is the king. Remember, guys. Now, there was a champion. I'm just jumping through, so you have to read through. There was a champion named Goliath. I'm sure you've all heard of that name before. Goliath. And Goliath came out of the Philistine camp. So Goliath was from the camp of the Philistines. Saul was the camp of the Israelites. Follow me, guys. And Goliath was six cubits and a span. Now, one of the first things I did when I was preparing this lesson is I had to check what does six cubits and a span mean in height today? Do you know how tall that is? That's nine feet. That's very huge. So imagine this very big guy, nine feet. Nine feet is taller than this ceiling. Nine feet is very big. So he comes out and he tells the Israelites, why are you all standing here? I am one man standing here. So all I need is for you to bring out your best soldier and fight me. If I win, you all become our slaves. If you win, then we will become your slaves. Now, this is 
a nine feet tall guy. I mean, guys, nine feet tall is taller than some cars. Yes, imagine someone that tall and that big looking at all the Israelites because he's confident that nobody could beat him. Now, all the Israelites were scared because they saw this very big figure. How are we going to defeat him? Now, while this was happening, Jesse, David's father, has already sent him because David had three brothers in the army. Okay, so go and meet your brothers and give them some food because they'll be hungry. They've been there for days. Now, David had to leave the sheep. You know, he, remember, David is a shepherd, so he's watching over his father's flock. So he had to leave his sheep with another shepherd because he's like, okay, I need you to help me watch this. I need to do something for my dad. So it took David a while to get to where his brothers were. And in that time, for 40 days, not one, two, three, 40 guys. So in that time, it took the Philistines 40 days. Now, for 40 days, every day, the Philistines came out with Goliath. Morning, afternoon, and evening. Where is your strongest fighter? Where is your strongest fighter? The Israelites kept thinking, who are we going to bring out? Because you, they had one choice. And if one person loses, that's the end. No second trials, no third chances, just one chance. So they had to make the right choice. Now, Goliath was clothed in the nicest armor, bronze. He was big, he was strong, waiting for a fighter. So when David got there, and his brothers were surprised, why are you here? He gave them the food, okay. Father asked me to bring you food. And then after that, they expected him, okay, go away. Then David is there wondering, what is everyone doing? Why is everyone standing out? I mean, is it there a war? So he found out and he heard Goliath shouting and speaking with so much confidence. Now, this is the interesting thing about David. And I'm sure some of us can relate. So as David is the last child, the youngest, I can relate because I'm the youngest also. So he was confident and he said, like, why are you guys afraid? We are protected by God. Someone should go and fight him. And they all, you know, his youngest, keep quiet. You don't know what you're talking about. So David went on and he told Saul and he told the army that he will fight Goliath. <laughs> of course, everybody laughed at him. This is a young boy. Everybody else is built like a soldier, strong in their uniform. Yeah, this young little boy, shepherd boy with his stick says he wants to fight a nine feet tall giant. Of course, everybody must have been thinking, he's not serious. But David was serious. Okay. So when the Israelites looked at it, I mean, nobody else was willing to come forward to fight this guy. So if someone says he can do it, what's the worst that can happen? We lose. So they brought the biggest armor, the nicest armor, and they were putting it on David. But everything was weighing David down. And David is like, no, 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 no. I don't fight like this. I'm going to fight the same way I fight the wolves and all the, and the wild animals that try to hurt my father's flock with my catapult and my pebbles. And I'm sure when he said this, everybody must have gone, <laughs> what are you saying? How can you want to fight a giant who has a big sword with catapults and small stones? Let's find out and let's see how the fight went. So this big guy, Goliath, walks up <laughs> little boy wants to fight me. And I'm sure the height difference must have been very bad for young David to want to fight big Goliath. So obviously Goliath must have been very confident. Anybody would, for someone that big, brought out his sword. He was ready for the fight. And he looked at David, no armor, no sword, just stones and a catapult. He looked silly. So they go straight into the fight. And David maneuvers. He gets his perfect shot and straight to the middle of Goliath's head. And lo and behold, what happens? Goliath falls down. And everybody goes, ah! How? Stone. It did not make any sense. It was so surprising. Everybody was shocked. And I can imagine it like, imagine like, a football match, something happens and everybody goes, oh, how? But that is how shocked everyone was be. Now, think about it, friends. This young boy 
was fighting a big guy. And he felt he was strong enough to fight a big guy. Obviously, guys, this doesn't make much of any sense. But that is what is, that's the interesting about strength and courage. Now, he knew who he was. He knew he was the son of God. He knew God in heaven would back him up. And also because the Philistine was not, they did not believe in God. So he felt, God loves me. God loves us. Why would this person stand there and be insulting all of us? I will stand for God. And he did that. He won against all odds. He actually won. Nine feet. Let's also remember that. Nine feet. So this is a very big guy. Now, that's one character. Another character is also Joshua. I know the name Joshua doesn't always ring a bell. Like, who is Joshua? So we have to go to the book of Joshua. Yes, he has a book in the Bible. Joshua chapter 1. And we're going to read from 1 to 9. So, and the and it says, after the death of Moses, I don't know if you guys remember Moses. Moses was a very popular figure in the Bible. The servant of, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun. Moses, ooh, Joshua was also the aide of Moses. So Joshua was like one of Moses' assistants. Moses, my servant, is dead. So sad. Now then, you... And all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River to the land. Now, this land God is talking about, God had promised the Israelites after he took them out of Egypt that there's a land, a very bountiful land that I'm going to give you. I've promised it to your ancestors. It's a very big land filled with milk and honey, filled with everything you ever wanted, all for you. You're not going to have to fight for it. You're not going to do much for it. But because you're my people, I will give you this land. Now, they needed a leader because Moses was the one that led them out of Egypt. And now Moses was gone. He had gone to be with the Lord. So they needed a leader. Basically, God picked Joshua to be the leader. God picked Joshua to be the leader. Now, I must tell you, that's a big move from someone like Moses. Moses was respected. Moses was the guy that brought them out of Egypt. He was the guy that helped them part the Red Sea. He was the same person that brought them the Ten Commandments. So this popular figure, just imagine, guys, that you, there's someone in your class, okay? And he's the most popular, not just the most, the, popular, the most popular kid in your class, the most popular kid in your whole year group. And one of the top three most popular your whole school, and he has the position of class prefect, or no, he's the prefect of the school. And suddenly he leaves the school, and then your principal says, you, lie on me, you're going to be the next prefect. What? How? Why? Me? From nowhere. So that is how Joshua felt. So Joshua tried to come up with every excuse, like, Lord, I cannot do this. It is too big a job for me. Pick someone else. But God said, nope. You, you, Joshua, you are the one I want. So I'm sure Joshua must have come with every excuse. No, I can't do it. I'm too short. I'm not tall enough. I'm not pretty enough. My hair is not long enough. I don't know many things. I'm not that smart. But God said, who? You, Joshua, I need you. And God told him one thing. Now, this is going to be our memory verse for today. And it is the book from the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Remember, we're reading verse 1 to 9. But I want you to read the whole of verse 1, the whole of chapter 1. That's Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 to 16. Just 16 verses. So, but I will start from Joshua chapter 1, verse 7. And verse 7 says, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law of my servant Moses. Remember. Moses had made some laws. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Now, be strong, be very courageous. Don't turn away from the Lord. Don't go to the left, don't go to the right. Stay right there. And now, verse 8, 
keep this book of the law always on your lips. Now, God did not mean put the book on your lips, literally. No. So what he meant is when you know something, like when you read, you understand when you read your books, you know, if anybody asks you a question about a particular topic you know very well, you can just say it. That's what God meant. Keep the book of the law always on your list. Mean, meaning you must always know the law. Now, meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. It's like the laws in your school. If you know the laws, you will remember, okay, I, don't, I can't do this because it is wrong. But if you don't know the laws, when you do something wrong, you didn't really know because you don't remember. So now, verse 9, which is the lovely one. Now, God said to Joshua, have I not commanded you? Be strong. Again, remember, this is the second or third time we're hearing this. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Nope. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. So do not be afraid, meaning another word is don't be scared. Do not be discouraged, meaning don't be demotivated or don't feel like you can't do it. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, will be with you. Not just today, but wherever you go, meaning everywhere you go, God is with you. And that's a big statement. Now this is, let's remember guys, Joshua felt like he couldn't do it. And he had reasons not to do it because Moses had set a standard so high. And this ha will happen every time in life. And you know, one interesting thing I remember, my friends, is that God likes to say that, you know, we say God doesn't pick the qualified. He picks the unqualified and makes them qualified. So when God picks you, it's not about whether or not you have the strength to do it or you think you are smart enough. God picked you. So surely God knows you can do it. He could have picked anybody, but he picked you. So for him to pick you, he knows you can do it. And it always seems like a daunting task. One of my friends told me something this week. It gave me very exciting news. In the office, she got kind of like a promotion. And let's say she's on like level A and they were telling her to do things for level F. That's a whole lot. And we we're talking about it and it felt like, oof, there's a lot of work to do here. A whole lot of work. But you know what? Another thing we said is, for this to happen, this is probably a sign from God. Just like the story of Joshua. He was not qualified. He did not even feel like he had to do it. He was just Moses' assistant. Now he had to take on the role of Moses. So every now and then, my friends, there will come a time that you will be chosen to do something. You will always, you will feel like, nope, not me, pick someone else. Pick another person, not me. I can't do it. I cannot do it. Well, no, you can. You will do it. And you probably do a better job than anyone else. So like the memory verse is Joshua 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Remember, God was talking to Joshua here. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Be strong. Be courageous. Because God is not just watching you today or tomorrow, but every day, everywhere you go, no matter how far you go, God is there watching you, making sure that you can do this. He's with you and you can do this. So, two specific characters. David from 1 Samuel and Joshua from Joshua chapter 1. Two different scenarios. One was a young small boy that beat a big strong guy. Another guy, which is Joshua, had to take up a big task. Like imagine you had the last child and then your mom doesn't put your, you had the fourth sibling out of, you have three other siblings, so you had the fourth, you had the last child. And your mom says, okay, I'm not giving the first responsibility, not the second, not the third, but you, the last, you're in charge. Your dad and I are going out, you're in charge. I'm sure when your mom says that you must go, me? Do you mean him? Me? But you. So remember, in those moments, when you feel like you cannot do it, 
Remember the memory verse. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Be strong. Remember, your strength is not in your physical strength, how you look. Do not be discouraged. You have to be courageous. You have to feel like, yes, I can actually do this. Remember, God is with you, not just today, not just tomorrow, but every day, wherever you go, he's with you. He has chosen you, same way he has chosen me. You can do this, and you will do this. <sighs> oh, my friends, I don't know about you, but that was a whole lot of knowledge. I am so excited. I'm so happy that we learned about Joshua. We learned about being strong and being courageous. So remember, guys, read up on the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, from verse 1 to 52. Read the whole thing. You can even go back and read more because it was, the story of David is one that is very interesting. Then also read up the whole of Joshua, chapter 1. That's 16 verses from verse 1 to 16. Read up on everything. And always remember the memory verse. Anytime you feel scared, anytime you feel like you cannot do it, you cannot do it. Just remember Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. I'm glad we did this. I'm so happy. So, so happy. So, we're going to end on this note. And as we end, we're going to say a closing prayer. Same way we opened with a prayer, we're going to close with a prayer. So, does anybody want to pray? Anyone? Anyone? I'll pray. So again, put your hands together, close your eyes, and we just say thank you because we're thanking God for a wonderful class. We're thanking him for all the fun knowledge. We're thanking him for everything that he did, for everything that we learned. We're thanking him for teaching us about David, about Joshua, about how to be strong and how to be courageous, that our strength is not in how we look, but in our faith in God which is most important. And as we leave here, Lord, we ask that you help us to remember this and to take it on into our lives each and every day and to share with our friends because we love to share with our friends. Sharing is caring. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So I'll see you guys soon. Soon. Bye, friends.